Hello everyone and welcome back to the Rust Crash Course for Beginners. In this lesson we are going to talk about references and borrowing, which are crucial concepts in Rust. So without further ado, let's dive into the lesson. All right, so we start from the usual Hello Rust project. And last time what we did was basically creating a method, hello, that printed a string. We know that if we pass the string right here inside the method, what we do is that we move the string. So before calling the method hello, s was the owner of the string. Then when we call hello, the body right here becomes the owner of the string. And therefore, if we try to print s outside hello, what we have is, let me just try, we have a compiler error because here we have value borrowed after move because we moved s inside the method hello, all right? A workaround we had to do was basically returning the string back. So we pass the ownership to the method and then the method gives back the ownership to the main function, all right? And this method work. We have the first inside string print and then we have string, which is again printed in the main body. This works, but it's not very convenient. We often have to create variables and then call methods on them, but also use them again in the function body that called that method. So we basically want to do this, but we because we are doing it very often, this is not really convenient. So what do we do instead is using references. So let's say that we pass, as we did last time, s to method hello, and then we try to print s. Okay, like this. If we compile, what we have is that we get the usual error, value borrowed after move, because method hello is taking the ownership of the string. All right, instead of moving the string inside the method, what we do now is passing a reference of the string. So instead of returning a string, the method will be, will return nothing. So it will be void basically, and then we use a reference. So if you are comfortable with C++, you'll be very familiar with the syntax. We put an end before the type. So end string. And then finally, the last modification we do is placing the same end here. All right, so we save and compile. And as you can see, it works. So let's see step by step what we did. We create a string and S is the owner of the string. Then we pass a reference of the string to method hello. And you can say that this is a reference thanks to the end sign right here, okay? The body will print the string without taking the ownership of the string and then we'll print it back in the main function body. So this is the basic usage of uh, references. Right, so this works, but uh, we'll soon hit a problem. If we want to modify the string reference, for example, we say that a push string and then a string, for example, uh, suffix like this, and we try to compile it, we'll see an error because push string mutates the string, a simple reference like this does not work because uh, one of the guarantees of a reference is that uh, the content is read-only. If you want to modify it, then you cannot use a reference as it is right here. What you need is a mutable reference. So in this case, to make a mutable reference, what we do is placing the mute keyboard keyword here and then also here in the side of the first end. We compile it. And of course, now it's a, we have an error because we declared the variable s as immutable. So we have to make it mutable. So again, another mute here. We recompile again. And as you can see, it works. And the string right here had the new suffix, right? So let's dive step by step on what we did. We declare s, a string s, as mutable. And this is key because if we declare a variable as immutable, then we cannot mutate it afterwards. We have to declare it as mutable. Then we pass a mutable reference to hello, all right? Then 
inside hello we print the string and then we modify it appending the suffix then we return to the main body and then we print the resulting string so as you can see we get a mutable reference which does mostly what we wanted to do originally without passing the ownership to the hello method there are a couple of remarks that have to be taken into account though the big limitation is that we can only have one mutable reference in a scope at a time we can have unlimited immutable references in the scope so let's see with an example what i mean so instead of writing like this we create another variable which is a reference to s for example let z equal to mute s and then we pass z instead of mute s we see from the output that we get the exact same result as before. Now, if I wanted to create another reference at t equal to mat s, and we try to compile it, we get a compiler error, cannot borrow s as mutable more than once at a time. This may seem like a big limitation, but it's crucial in order to guarantee thread safety which is one of the most compelling Rust selling points. So the idea is that if there is only one writer at a time, then we cannot have a concurrency problem. If we allow multiple writers to the same data, then we might have a race condition because multiple writers in multiple threads try to write to the same data without any synchronization and that causes a duck race, which is a pretty problematic bug in most situations. Then, of course, Rust offers ways to create this mutability from multiple places, but it does so only if you explicitly synchronize its access, and we are going to see it in one of the future lessons. But for now, let's only remember this simple rule. There is only one mutable reference at a time, but there can be multiple unlimited immutable references in the same scope. Of course, what we said is that we can only have one mutable reference in the given scope. What this means is that if we define another inner scope, then we might uh, uh, get around this problem. For example, as we said, this code right here doesn't compile because we have multiple references, but if I enclose z inside these brackets right here and I try to compile it, there is no problem. Why? Because uh, these brackets right here define a scope. And when we arrive at the end of the scope, so the end bracket, this mutable reference is dropped. And therefore, when t is declared, we don't have any mutable reference at that point. So we can uh, declare a new one. Right, so to conclude this lesson, let me talk about uh, one of the great Rust selling points, which is uh, the borrow checking and the lifetime checking. So one of the issues you may have if you're trying to use references in, for example, C++, is that you use a reference to a variable, and then while you are still using that reference, that value is uh, dropped or uh, deleted or the memory is freed or whatever. What you have at that point is... Uh, an invalid reference. So if you try to do any operation on that, you get all sort of unpredictable behavior or error because you're trying to manipulate an invalid region of memory. In Rust, this does not happen. For example, let's take this example right here. Function hello returns a string reference, all right? And as you can see, I create a string with the content hello and then return it. And here in the main, I basically save this reference and then try to print it. If we try to compile this program, as you can see, we get a compiler error, which says missing lifetime specifier. What is the problem? Here we are trying to return a string reference, right? But the problem is when we arrive to the end of the function, this string right here is dropped because we are not moving the string. We are only returning a reference to it, all right? So Rust prevents us to um, use that reference because uh, we know that it is invalid, all right? If we wanted to do something like this, 
what we needed to do is moving the string outside the function. So if we try it again, as you can see, it works. That's because we are creating the string and instead of dropping at the end of the function, we are moving it to the color S. So as a result, S is not dropped and we can still print it. I really hope this was uh, somewhat clear. If you have any question, please leave a comment below and I'll try to answer your questions. And uh, I really hope you liked the video. If you did, please consider subscribing and liking the video. And I hope to see you in the next one in which we are going to talk about a different type of references, which is a slice.